Hi, I'm Tom Long. When I consider what the Bible has to say to us, I like to do so in the context of music and the beauty I find all around me in our island area here on the Carolina coast. Recently, as I was driving down Interstate 40, I saw on the side of the road three men in a line with giant crosses resting on each of their shoulders and their heads bowed, as in prayer. They had with them what looked like might be a film crew. At that moment, I had no idea what they were up to. But there's a link to the story in the description below. The concept of picking up your cross and carrying it was something taught by Jesus before his own crucifixion and by Paul after Jesus had been crucified, dead, and buried, only to be raised from the dead and ascend into heaven. What does it mean to you to hear Jesus say, take up your cross? We talk about taking up our cross or say, that's just a cross I'll have to bear, but have we ever really put thought into what that means? The Bible teaches us that the cross is where Jesus died as a sacrifice for the forgiveness of any ways we may have stepped outside of God's will or fallen short in the good that we were trying to do. But Lord, what does it mean for me to take up my cross, to bear my cross? This week's epistle reading in Romans 12, paired with Galatians 2.20, cracks open the doorway to understanding. Paul wrote, Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. As I meditated on that expression to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. I found myself seeing the concept of taking up my cross with an entirely new dimension. I mean, wasn't the cross a dying sacrifice? Yes, but it was also a life-giving sacrifice. In this verse, Paul says, that a living sacrifice is holy, which means something set apart for a divine purpose. And also, a living sacrifice is pleasing to God. It is natural and obvious to see the cross as a killing thing. But a living sacrifice, what is that? In verse 2, we're not told not to conform to the pattern of this world. Paul warns us to beware of the desire to fit in. Are we obsessed with watching news shows and reading social media that fills us with fear and hate for people with different political, religious, or cultural views? Are we tempted to leave the library or study time in our rooms in order to go party or hang out? How are you tempted to be a conformist? Instead of conforming, Paul urges us to be transformed, literally to be metamorphosed. We're changed by having our mindset renovated. Paul explains elsewhere that this renewal of our minds occurs as the work of God, the Holy Spirit, in us. Sometimes called repentance, this renovated mindset, this outlook makeover, means that because we see things differently, we act and feel differently. Instead of fitting in, we find ourselves standing out. Not necessarily in a way people around us will approve of, but in a way that will be, as Paul put it, pleasing to God. The cross isn't just a picture of how Christ died. It is a picture of why Jesus sacrificed himself. It is a symbol of the defeat of sin, death, and the devil, but it is also a picture of God's sacrificial agape love for us. To take up that cross means that our focus must rise beyond dying to the old ways. It must also manifest itself as carrying that sacrificial agape love toward others into our broken world. That is a living sacrifice, carrying love into the world even when it costs us. Some people carry a cross as a necklace. Others carry a heart as a necklace. Now, I see both as symbols of love. 
When Paul gave his own testimony in Galatians 2.20, he said, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by the faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me.